So here we are back on the siren, on the long boat. Painted it white, That'll give me, that gives me a chance to see where I need to do some more filling and sanding. I used Tamiya paint on this for the white because it's thinner and soaks in a little bit more and raises the grain a little bit. I got my center plank in and I'm starting working on these ribs. Do the ribs, I'm just soaking them in hot water, which if you have one of these Yeti cups like this, works great for your hot water to soak your wood in. It keeps the hot water hot for a long time. But I'm soaking the wood and then I have this pin I'm using to um, shape it. It's got a nice radius to it. So I can just start getting a bend in it without destroying the wood. And then come back and start sticking some super glue on it. And I'll come in, I'll come across from where I am on one of the ribs. Push it down in. Try to get the line up. And I can just use my finger to press it in. This pin also has rounded ends on it, so I can actually get in there with this and press it in without getting my fingernail marks in there. Cut it off flush with the top roughly, and there it is. I'm going to keep doing that on this piece, on this boat, until I have all the ribs in, and then I'll come back, and the next thing will be to put the uh, sole plate in, the sole boards. So all my uh, ribs are in. So now start time to put the uh, floorboards in, the sole or whatever it's called. And that is just a seven strips of 132nd by 16 inch wood. If you do not have yourself a set of calipers yet, go, I would recommend that you, strongly recommend that you have a set. These are inexpensive on Amazon. I think these are like 20 bucks. If you're a machinist, you're not gonna buy these, but for a modeler, they're sufficient. So this is 1 16th by 1 32nd. I already cut a piece off here. It's going to go right down the center on top of the, the keel. And then there will be three more on either side. These things are just going to be glued in with super glue. And every one is going to be kind of fit in and mirrored so that they match from side to side. The ends of them if you look at the instructions, the ends here are pretty much going to be hidden by the grates. Here you can see the ends of board two and three coming out, or three and four. Two may be fine. Center one, board number one, you're not going to see the ends on either end. So I'm going to go ahead and start getting those glued in. And come back and we'll be able to do the grates. Okay, so I have the sole plates in the board the boat all the floorboards i've also stained the ribs the inside of the boat because you're not going to get to this after a while this is done and working on the grates next instructions say take one of these grates pieces or a bunch of them narrow them down and then glue them all edge to edge well, i tried that and it's just it, it's a mess Model Expo, Model Shipways gives you a whole lot of extra of these. And I looked ahead, and the only place these grates are used on the ship are the deck grates, which I've already made, and the one the bow and stir, and the stir bow and stern of the boat. So I made the executive decision, just made up some grates like I did for the deck, glued them together really solidly with super glue, and then I'll go ahead and sand them down to get them thinner. And then cut them to shape to fit in, or cut them to shape to fit in, and then sand them down and get them thinner. And do the edges and stuff on them. I think that's going to end up with a lot better grates, a lot more uniformity in size and everything. These got to dry still. And I'll start shaping them, sand them thinner, get them shaped to fit in the boat. And then I'll come back and we can edge band them. So, made up the grate. Sanded it down, got trimmed up, some boards on the edge, and stuck it in. That's a lot of work to get to that point. A lot of sanding it around, trimming the edges, getting it squared off. 
sand the edges smooth on one end so you got the the white end and then trying to shape, sh trim the shape make sure when you're trimming it to fit in the bottom that you already got this as thin as you can get it this is actually twice as thick as it should be in the front but make sure you angle the edges you want a nice almost sharp edge on the sides so when you stick it down in those edges are what's going to be seen the rest of it's not if we're edging it, I just used the same wood that I was using for these boards in the bottom and just made it so good on the edge and then, you know, made this a little bit smaller than it needs to be. Glued those on the edges, sanded it smooth all around, made sure I was angled and got it to fit down inside. So I'm going to do that on this other side and we'll come back and next is going to be doing these thwarts. So I have the bell grates in. The way I did that is built the crates up as per norm. Then I made a stencil or template for the grate in this case is for the back. And I drew that out, copied that off onto my grates. You can't probably see it, but there's a pencil line around here. So next I can just cut it out, start sanding it and shaping it. So I'm cutting it. Do your two long, two flat sides first. That way you get a nice flat edge. I'm just using a, a razor saw for this. Then you can come through with your paper, your sandpaper while the edge is still long and give it a good sand. And get it nice and smooth get all the rough edges off from the saw. So you end up with that. Then you can come back and you can start cutting these sides off. They're going to be a little bit curved, so I'm going to go as long as I can. And cut it off. And with that, you start getting it shaped out. So as my cut's a little bit of sandy, I got it so it fits in there pretty good. But the next step is I need to taper the back side of this. Because otherwise it just sits up really high and looks clunky. With that, you just very carefully sand off the back at an angle. When you do this angling on the back, you want to make sure you go far enough because you're going to have to put a piece of wood on this outside edge to, to finish it off. Not as, like I did on the front, not as important on the back because there is a bench back here as well that sits on top of it. You just want to make it look as thin as you can. So I have the grate made up. It fits pretty good in here. Sticks on in there and sits down where it should. Need to be a little bit of fine tuning on it, but I'm pretty pleased with it. So once I get that glued in, we can start doing the supports for the thwarts. Things when you're making these grates in front, you need to make sure they're sitting low enough because the supports for the thwarts need to be an eighth inch below this top edge of the boat. So you need to have that space there and space between it and the grates and all that. So we'll go ahead and get this glued in and we'll start working on the uh, supports for the thwarts. So I got one of the rails in to support the thwarts and this is supposed to be an eighth inch down from the top. So what I did is I took a piece of eighth inch foot wide wood, set it on the inside of the boat, just come in, mark it, and that mark will actually be a little bit below eighth of an inch, which means you can bury it underneath your support for your thwarts. So if I do that, spots along here, one bow, one stern, one in the center. That'll give you a good idea of where the actual piece of wood should go. So when you glue it in, you can get it to about right level. And um, when you glue it in, you glue half of it at a time. So I'll come in and I'll put my glue On half the boat, stern half is easier. And then you can come back in and just take your piece of wood, try to get it to match the back because, or match the other side because it's going to be seen at the bow, and put it in. Be advised if you don't get that front end, then this piece of wood back here is going to curve and it's going to be kind of weird where it sits. Once you get it where you want it, you can sit there and hold it tight, 
and let the super glue hold it or bond it in place. Once that's in place, then you come on the bow section and do the same thing. And this one should be pliable enough, you just move it out of the way. And it doesn't have to be every single frame, but you're going to want to get good adhesion at the bow where there's the majority of the bend. So once you get all the glue in place, you can sit here and press the bow in place, get lined up where you want it, and let that dry. And if you got it right, making sure you cut your pieces equal length beforehand, then you'll end up with the bow section ending up about the same. And the bow is where you're going to see it. You're not going to see it at the stern, but you will see it at the bow. Because the first fork is basically right here. There will be some stuff up here, the knee and stuff, but the first thwart's right here, so it's possible you're going to see this piece. Back here, you have a thwart here, and then you have another one back here, and then stuff on the sides. So I'm going to let that fully set up, and then I'll start figuring out the thwarts, which are going to be made of an eighth inch wide piece of wood. Back on the ship's boat, I've been putting the thwarts in. Um, this one I've gone to where I jumped again putting it in. It's supposed to have another piece on it and a strap for the mast. But these have been going pretty good. Um, what I did is I grabbed the instructions here. Did the boat sideways and marked out where they should be on the rail below it. About the center of the rail where they should be. And then come in and cut each one and be able to get it in. So I'm going to continue cutting those and putting them in, and get then I can come back and get this piece done. Um, one thing I've noticed on mine is the th thwarts are a little bit high on the left and the grace a little bit high on the right. I'm not overly worried about it. So once you get all the thwarts in and get the oars sitting in here, they're not going to be seen. Plus, I noticed there should be a mast for this boat, but there's none in the instructions. So I'm going to think about if I'm going to make a mast up and what it should look like and figure out that out. And I might possibly make a mast to go in here as well. But in the meantime, I'm going to get the rest of these thwarts in. And then come back and figure out what I'm doing next. So I have the, uh, so I have the brace here for the mast in place and all the thwarts. Next thing is the windlass, which is going about right here. This is something that needs to be cut to length and fit and, and inserted into the ship or the boat. The only direction they have is that's made out of 336 by 336 stock. And mark it off and carve it out to shape. But there's no real measurements. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it a little bit long. And then shape it and then make it so it fits into there in there correctly it'll get um a pin on either end to hold in place and then there's a little piece of wood that goes on top of that pin to hold it down in the meantime this should fit between these two rails for the uh for the uh Support supports. Let me get this camera here better here. So it's going to be fitting in between them. So you can see how much we can shave off.
something like that. Get rid of the fuzz on the ends. And they'll fit right down in between. I actually took off a little bit too much, but that's fine because it's going to have pins supporting it. And it's something that's supposed to spin anyway. The next is to figure out the actual shape of it here. I guess we had life size drawing for it, but we don't. So, come in. Mark off about where I want it to be for the flats. Just eyeballing it. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's going to be perfect mainly because <clears throat> excuse me, it's going to have ores covering it. So, we've got some tools here. File with a sharp edge. And then come in. And make this octagonal. And once it's octagonal, you go back and take out the flats and make it round. If you do it right, which will end up is with a square piece here and then a round piece on the end. I'm going to go ahead and finish shaping this up and then we'll see how I'm making it fit. And with a little bit of filing, sanding, and drilling later, there's a windlass. It's not perfect, but I've never claimed to be a master model builder, so it'll be good enough for me. That'll sit down in there once I trim the pins down to length. And then I can put little pieces of wood on top on the side there to keep hold it in place. Once I get these things trimmed down. And this thing will just sit right in there. Something like that. I'll hold it down, it'll get a couple more pieces of the wood that was used for the the support for the forts. So I'm looking at the picture. At least just go across those two beams there, or ribs. Cut off, make two of those, glue them in, and the windlass will be done. To make it fit a little bit better, I'm going to go ahead and grab Point to my round file and just make a little notch for the wire to fit into. 
on either side. So then I can set the windlass in those notches and glue this wood on top. Oh, I'm keeping it here. Camera tilted again. Sorry about that. First thing though is to take the windlass itself and just glue it down onto those areas. And then take the pieces on top. And with that, the windlass is in place, even in the right position. Next step is the cap rail. The cap rail, the instructions say you're going to shape it out of a piece of balsa stock. They actually have it laser cut for you. They gave you two of them. The pieces for the other one out here. I took one of them and cut it up into quarters. Mainly because as cut laser wise it's not wide enough for the back. So with this I can take and glue it on in pieces and get a nice overhang I went all the way around. There should be just a hair overhang on the outside and a hair overhang on the inside. For me the outside is going to be more important. So I can go ahead and glue those on and I'll leave a little gap in the stern and the bow. I'll use one of these for the stern, one of these for the bow so I can get the lengths right and get them all glued in place. Uh, this one here is going to come up to about that fork there. Uh, might be faster if I do it this way. Upside down. That way I can see my overhang. Like that. And that gives me enough overhang there. My light battery just died. Here we go. And then I can do the other one. And that'll leave me up with a little gap right there. So I do the other one on here. Stick it in place. Upside down again. That gives me the ability to see where it should fall in place. It also shows you, in stark contrast, how far off you are in the shape of your boat. Nobody will notice that once it's on display. That means this part here I'll have to sand down a little bit to make it more in line with the boat. But you notice I have the gap right here. To fill in that gap, I'm just going to use a piece of wood from the other one and get everything sanded smooth. So I'm going to go ahead and do the bow section. Get those filled in and be back. And there we are, cap rails in place. I've actually got it in four pieces plus a little filler piece here. And I've cracked it here, but everything is in place. When everything's done, you'll barely be able to see those seams. I mean, they'll still be there, but you won't be able to see them very well. So, with that, I'm going to let this thing fully cure.
We'll come back, and I think the next thing to do, let me see, is everything on the bottom of the hole. So you can see it's going to have to be, everything's going to be up to that shape to fit as well here. Uh, it's sturdy. But it'll all get in there, it'll fit just fine. So I'll let this dry and I'll come back and do that. Reach that time in the instructions where we're putting on the, and get them out here, the stem, the stern post, and the keel. You notice, if I can get set it up here better, that overall, as laser cut, they're longer than the boat. There's no way the one's going to fit and fit tightly with the other. Did that on purpose so that everybody's boat's going to be a slightly different length, slightly different shape. Doesn't matter. To begin, I marked a line down the center. Then go ahead and I can put one of these on, glue it in place, and once that's dry, I can go ahead and put the other one on. I think I'm going to put the bow on first. The stem part, stem of the bow section of the keel, and line it up with my center line, glue it in place. I'll have to come back and I'll do some filling in before I paint the whole white. So I'll get that glued in. The stern part of the keel and the stern post is going to be in the same way, but when I glue it in place, I'm going to have to cut it to fit right here in the center. Just cut it off, make it fit. So I'm going to get those in place now. And I am going to use super glue for this. Grab one mouse to a scrap piece of wood now. down the center. I'm going to hold this for a while then I'll come back and get the other one glued. I'll do that off camera though. So I got on through and I painted this back, the black on the side. When I did that I chose its width by using this um, the same wood I used for the uh, windlass. I just marked off to give me a width that gave me a good width on there. Next is I got to put a piece of wood down the below that line and then I can start working on the build up at the top. I've already put in the bowsprit step which is just a piece of wood here. Same size of wood as on the windlass. Carved the shape and it is off center. It's supposed to be off center because the bowsprit, the bowsprit would go to one side of the uh, stem. It would not go over the top. So I have that glued in. So let's go through the grate, but if you want to do that, you can do that, but you have to do it early on when you make the grate itself. Minus thing on top, you'll never be able to tell the difference. Uh, so the next step again is to start getting these sides on. But the only thing left on this is the sides, the splash shields, the um, oar locks, and the knees. And then the boat will be done does get a bunch of these oars sitting inside, eight oars sitting in, or four oars sitting inside. That'll need to be shaped out as well, final sanded. But in the meantime, I have a piece of wood for doing on the sides. The instructions say it's three th uh, one thirty second by one thirty second, I think. Good luck finding that in your kit. This is as close as I came, which is 30 second thick, but a little bit, just a hair wider. Let's see. Yeah, one thirty seconds. So mine is one thirty second thick, but a little hair wider. Three three sixty fourths wide. That's about as close as I'm going to get in my kit. Hopefully, you got uh, wood in yours that's cut more to the size. It's not really going to matter. It's going to look good in any case when it goes on here. So I'm going to get this. Go ahead and get this glued on. I'm going to do the. Uh, stern first 
And then I'll come back and do the sides that overlaps the stern. Now I'm just going to glue that off super glue so I'm going to get that done and then we'll start working on the splash shields and the oarlocks. So I got the rub rails put in place. Next I need to get these oarlocks in place and I went, or, went just on the plans and marked off where they are. It's four on each side. I already have a little pieces of wood cut out, painted black, then just dip in a little bit of glue and stick in place. And then come back and drill some holes and put some little pins in for the tops of the oarlocks. Where it amounts to is one between these two thwarts, one between these two, one between these two, and one between these two. And I'm just using the tip of an exacto knife to pick them up and dip them in some glue. Something like that. And while I'm at it, I have two parts of my splash shield here to put on. And they go on the stern. So same kind of thing, just dip them in some glue, pick a spot, and stick them on. Oops. It should be easier said than done. Something like that. Realistically, you should curve them a little bit so they follow the flow of the cap rail, but I'm not. And once those two are dry, I can come back and do one piece, cut the length across the back here. The pins on the oarlocks are just your 28 gauge copper wire, drill a couple holes, stick it in, glue in place, cut them all off to the level. Once that's done, the only details we need is the knees in here the strap on the bow and the gudgeons and then we just whip together the rudder and oars and tie them up and glue them in place inside and then the then I can spray the boat with some clear and it'll be done um, as an option you can add coils or rope or barrels or something in here I don't think I will as <clears throat> excuse me I was playing with the idea of making a mast and a bow spit just to lay in here I'm not sure I'm going to do that. I can do that later if I so choose. Still thinking about it. But I got time. In the meantime, I'm going to have this dry, then I'll get this piece in the back. And then I'll start thinking about the knees. I probably won't do the knees on camera because you got to cut each one individually and stick them in. And all you want to see is hands in the way. So.
so I have the boat pretty much done as much as I'm going to get it right now. Um, it still needs the oars in here and the rudder, but those can be added later. I got tab on the front here. They say to make that out of a copper strip. I made out of paper painted black. Same thing with the gudgeons on the back. There it is. That's how it's going to be. I got to coat it with uh, polyurethane and then it's ready to go on the ship. Next time I'll be working on the bow sprit finally. Um, in the meantime, thank you for watching.